Mark Norman. Hey, all right. Okay. Thanks for doing this, buddy. Seriously. Hey, thanks for having me. This is all very strange. It's good well, to be here. What part is strange for you? Well, I, I wasn't sure there was a live audience till just now. <laughs> Thought we were just doing a radio interview, but I've listened to all of them, so I should have known. Yeah, you actually should have known. <laughs> Did you think I used the laugh track all these years? Well, I thought yeah. maybe you stopped. You know, you're getting old. <laughs> <laughs> he literally just asked me my age two fucking minutes ago, and I was going, this is a goddamn mistake. Wow. As soon as he did it. You look good. Uh, yeah, you look you, like you roll cigars. <laughs> <laughs> I actually do roll cigars. Oh, there we go. And other things. Now, while we do it, I got to do this for the sense of history. The SAG uh, uh, is on strike right now, so we got a a call from Mark's people. And look, we're at the point where Mark now has people, (laughs) and we can't say the name of the network that your special is on or the name of the special. We'll just call it the (laughs) N-word. The big N. (laughs) All right, some of this, this is not live also, so... Oh, great. Yeah. Uh, that'll work out. But is that is that weird for you to know, like, this is, like, a very cool moment in your life, but show business, the business you love so much, is going sideways? Yeah, it's fascinating time because uh, it's all going to the Internet. The Internet yeah. is, is totally winning, and I'm I'm a big Internet guy. I have podcasts and YouTube specials, so... This is cool, but I still I love the internet. I have my home there. Yeah. Well, that's how long have have you and Joe been doing a show? Joe List, ten years. Almost as old as his herpes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That literally shocks me because that feels like just the other day, and now it's ten years. Well, it's wildly unsuccessful for the amount of time we've yeah. been doing it. So it's very niche. You know, yeah. Some guy, some podcast guru guy, was like. The name is bad, the set looks terrible, and you don't have guests. That's podcast death. Right. And we're like, ah, we're just, we like doing it. Yeah. So we're just going to keep doing it. And you got your own audience, and yeah. your life is good, you're independent. But now you're doing this for Netflix, which I shouldn't have said. Oh, uh, that was quick. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I had the under, but uh, not that far under. Yeah. But what made you think I'll take this to a streaming platform? <laughs> internationally streaming pa- platform. Well, I've always wanted to do, you know, it used to be HBO when I was a kid with the big hour and now yeah. then, then shifted over to, to the N and I always, <laughs> the you end. know, it was, it was huge and I wanted to get on it, but I was, I had no juice. I was yeah. nobody. So I filmed this special and I tried to shop it around everybody. Nobody bought it. And then I just put it on YouTube as a last ditch effort failure kind of thing. Like, uh, it's, I'll put it on this free platform, and it did well. Mm-hmm. And then Netflix eventually said, we'll give you... Oh, crap. Uh, beep that. that. Yeah, that one's not being bleeped. <laughs> all right, all right. But we ran out crap. of bleeps already. Right. You blew it with the N-word, is yeah, what you did. Yeah, that was quick. Yeah. Well, hopefully they'll just think I said that. Yeah. You know? Uh, but yeah, I, then uh, I, they gave me a half hour, and they were like, "Let's see if you can do that." And that went pretty well. So then I got the hour. Now it took a while. They shot the hour, or you shot it? Uh, I there's shot this it. new one. Yeah, there's this new deal now where they license stuff. Yeah, and it's it's kind of smart of them, but it sucks for the comic. But you get it back in two years. All right, so they you put up the money, and then in two years you get the money. You put up the money, you yeah. find the filmer, the editor, yeah. the whole thing, and the crew, and they just give you a lump sum, but you lose a lot of money with all the, the shooting. Yeah. And then uh, then you get it back in two years. That's the big, the big well, rub. The beauty of it is you didn't spend a lot of money on a set. Yeah, uh, true. There, there's a crinkle curtain, like it's yeah. the 1980s, <laughs> and then you can also see a drum kit there yeah. and a guitar. And I waited the entire special for the musical number, yeah. but no, it's just like why move this stuff? Exactly. Yeah. Why move it? It was yeah. up there. Uh, but that has kind of always been your thing, right? That you know you don't give that much a shit. Now nah, look at me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, it's all about the jokes. I want the jokes to yeah. shine. Now, we were talking about this before. You are like a joke machine and always have been. I've seen you in all the New York clubs. You come up, you're grinding new stuff all the time. Oh, thanks. Uh, how much 
At what age did you really fall in love with the joke? Uh, well, I, I had joke books as a kid, like uh -huh. old shitty like kid books. You know, like what is a what is a ghost eat for brick or for dessert? Booberry pie. You know, stuff like that. And I loved it. I read them all cover to cover. Well, they it's were, amazing. Yeah, it's a great it's joke. It's an amazing joke. It's, instead I mean, of blueberry. It's pretty good. You know? But in my six-year-old brain, that yeah, was huge, yeah. you know? And then there, was, oh, yeah. then there was different styles of jokes. Like, uh, well, what do, you, what do you do with a broken clock? Oh, no, wait. What was that one? You uh, fuck it? No, Is that the no, guy? No. I can't remember it. Exactly. It was one with a clock. <laughs> I think you buy a new clock or something. Yeah. It was, it was like you a, have a broken clock, you buy a new clock. Yeah, it was some kind of turn like that where you're like, oh, oh yeah. the chicken crossed the road and just to get to the other side. That's anti-comedy. So there's right. all these styles of comedy and joke writing and everyone was different. And, uh, you know, you remember you had the, the toilet books. There was a book on the back of the toilet that was this thick and it was like a thousand dirty jokes, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. And I love that. Now, here's the thing. You didn't grow up near show business. No. So did the idea of one day being inside of a television set seem too far away to you? Oh, yeah. It yeah. was uh, not even fathomable. It was right. like being an astronaut or something. Um, uh, you know, I, if I got on the news and did a hi, mom, in the back, that was that was big. Yeah, yeah. So uh, being a comedian, forget about it. Steve Martin, you know, right. George Carlin, what are you, crazy? Uh, but... I just thought if I could do it and not have a day job, I'll be happy. Well, here's, you grew up in New Orleans, which has yeah. never really had like a solid comedy no. scene type thing. A club, they open and close. They yeah. never last. Uh, because the people are, I guess, drunk? Yeah, they're yeah. drunk. <laughs> yeah. They all think they're funny. Yeah. It's all about music. They want to talk. They don't want to listen yeah. to me be like, cereal's weird. <laughs> you know? They want to go get laid or go see some boobs or live it up. You right. Know? But, you know, the funny thing is, you, there's nothing about you that reminds me of New Orleans. Mm. I don't hear the, the accent. No, no yeah. accent. I grew up in like a liberal bubble, you know, in this red state, you know, the swamp, coon ass, yeah. all this shit. And uh, I don't know. I, I just, you know, it never came up. Never came up to have an accent. No, yeah. no. <laughs> just... Mom, why are we different? <laughs> But so you, you have this thing. Now, did you start there or? I did. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I drove to Lafayette, which is about two and a half hours away because I didn't want to see anybody I knew. Right. And uh, I got blackout drunk just from sheer stage fright. And it went pretty well. But I remember the guy, I didn't know what the light was. As a comic, you get a light, which means you have a minute left. <laughs> yeah. So he was lighting me. And I was like, man, I must be killing. I thought it was like a <laughs> concert, you know. <laughs> And then I wouldn't yeah. get off, and yeah. he cut the mic. And I was like, ah, oh, the mic's broken, but uh, the show you know, must go on. So I just kept yelling my bad jokes. And then he eventually was on the side of the stage going, get the fuck off of there. And I was like, oh, jeez. And I got off. But I remember, yeah. I remember enjoying it. Yeah. Well, you know what's interesting to me, too, about the thing of, of being tough to get up the first time, right? I think it's harder for actual funny people. Mm. To get on stage the first time. A lot of people are like, I don't give a shit. I'll go do it. And they do it. But in the back of your mind, if you feel like your friends think you're funny and you love comedy, you're like, why would I risk this by oh. walking out there and f finding out it's not true? Yeah, well, I think co stand-up comedy, you're like already 40% less funny than you actually are. Right. Because you have to appeal to everyone. You yeah. can't just be funny. Like Will Ferrell is way funnier than us, but he can't do stand-up. The stand-up is a whole different – it's it's more uh, presentation and organization of of words, I think, as cheesy as that sounds. Well, so you can't right just be a, funny. Right away, your natural funniness with your family, your friends is taken away. Gone. Taken away. Because you have to yeah. learn the fundamentals and all right. that crap. Whereas if you're an athlete, you can just probably get it pretty quick, a sport. Yeah. You know, but funny, you got to find out how to be funny. In the, you have to channel it to where other people understand it. And which, stand up. Yeah, which is why when you first get up, you try to sound like a comedian. Yes. You know what I mean? So there's yes. comedians that you admire, and suddenly you're doing their cadence without even meaning to. Yeah. I I was Norm MacDonald out of the gate, and it was bad. I was Seinfeld. It was bad. And I remember bom I bombed in New York for two years straight when I moved here, and I was bombing at some show in the Lower East Side, and a guy started going, 
you know and it totally crushed me it, it ruined my life I wanted to kill this guy it was so soul crushing and I snapped on the guy because it was just years of bombing yeah. I was poor I was in New York yeah. I had been mugged a couple times I lived way out in uh, Crown Heights and I just snapped and that was killing <laughs> so I was like oh yeah. so he like broke me out of that right. kind of hacky 80s roll the sleeves up on the blazer kind of yeah. comedy but you got maybe the best heckle I've ever heard of in my life. It was a great heckle. He got me right to the bone. Yeah, right. Just everything. But the whole idea of bombing for two years yeah. in this city, it's a normal person would stop. You know what I mean? Like, that's the amazing thing to me about this walk of fire to get where you are today. Yeah. Any sane person would say, this is not working. Yes. A lot of people I started with have quit, and they're incredibly happy. Yes. They're all living it up with families and a big house, and yeah. they have a real job and healthy. I don't have right. health care. You yeah. know? So uh, you're right. It's, it's tough, but I had nothing. I had so little that it, even quitting was... Not, it didn't even cross my mind because it's like, ah, just keep going. What else are you doing? Right. Well, also there are certain people, we can think of them, that have that likability factor mm. where the audience is kind of rooting for them because they're, this natural sensitivity comes through. And you have none of that. None of that. <laughs> I, I wish. I would kill for that. I would kill. I, I'm yeah. shocked anyone is here. Yeah. This is fascinating. <laughs> yeah. But I would kill for that. I see comics with it. And yeah. I, I feel like I go on and people go... All right, we can pee. Yeah, now, right, this is yeah. this this guy is. You know, right. There's nothing. I'm not a fat guy. I'm not gay. I'm not <laughs> weird looking. I'm just, you know, there's nothing about me that that says funny. Right. And uh, <laughs> that's why I write so many jokes because I'm like I gotta yeah. get them. Right, right, right. And you do probably more jokes per minute on this special than most people would do in a couple specials. Oh, I thanks. mean, there's just a lot of jokes coming. Through. I'm a coward. I need the silence. I'm panicking. <laughs> up there. I'm panicking the whole time. Yeah. You actually think to yourself, I could lose these people. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. In a second. Yeah. My so, parents didn't listen to me. I think that fucked me up. <laughs> you think it might have fucked you up. I think that your parents ignored you as they a child. They ignored the hell out of me. Yeah. You know, they're just, you know, they worked hard. I'm coming home. I'm an annoying kid. And yeah. so I get it, but they never listen. I remember thinking, like, I got to do something to get people's attention. Right. At what point did you, I know that you loved comedy, but what point did you think, I am kind of funny? Was it Friends? Well, I would I would do well in school. I, I was a class clown, and I have right. no qualms about that. A lot of people are like, oh, class clown. No, I was an intellectual. No, I was farting and griefing yeah, right. and all that stuff. I was killing. Yeah. Uh, it is a good place, I think, to practice. Oh, yeah. Because it teaches you to, obviously, you can't go with the teacher. That's an automatic enemy right. that you have in the school. And the there's no teacher that's like, oh, I got a kid in my class. He's so fucking funny. And it's just, <laughs> it's a joy to teach him. <laughs> yeah. I, I remember I told this to David Brenner a long time ago. I go, they never will say, call a parent in and say, your fourth grader is funny on a 10th grade level. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, there's not, like, he's ahead of himself. <laughs> right, you know? right. And, and so you get, you get that thing to know that the negative attention is also attention, you know? Right, right. Yeah, and, funny was a, a negative. Like, hey, right. hey, stop being funny. Stop You're, being stop funny. Stop horsing around. Stop yeah. cutting up. But I, I still remember some of my big lines All right, in class. Let's hear, hear one. All right. One, uh, third grade, I was in uh, resource. Did you guys have resource? Mm, uh, we called it recess. Ah, no, that was no, different. Okay, all right. okay, so I was in resource, and uh, we were learning expressions like you know, what goes around. Comes around. And then she said, uh, if you're living in a glass house, you shouldn't. And I yelled out, shower. <laughs> Killed. Killed. <laughs> I was so proud of that it's one. <laughs> and I got it in before she could say it, so right. I had to time it right. Yeah. Uh, one time in ninth grade, in Mr. Shaw's science class, I was uh, new to the school. It was a Catholic school. I've been going to public school my whole life. I was terrified. And I didn't know anybody. I had a uniform on. I'm, I'm, I'm nervous. And uh, a girl was passing notes to another girl, and the teacher intercepted it and 
he started reading it and then she started crying like, oh, God, because it was pretty personal. Yeah. And uh, so he went on the he called an audible and he went uh, one ball gag, one uh, leather whip. You know, he was trying to be funny. And I went, how'd you get my Christmas list? Yeah. Killed. <laughs> Killed. <laughs> <laughs> So those were some big, and then I remember yeah. a girl, Danielle, after was like, you were funny today, do that again. And I was like, oh, my God, oh, a lady, talk to me. <laughs> the next day you're going over notes. Yeah, right oh, before yeah. Like, oh, yeah, oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that is, that's very, very quick, you know. Oh, and thanks. Again, you're not going to, you're not going to get people thinking that's a great thing. Adults are not going to like that no know? but the laugh was enough yeah the laugh is amazing and the laugh still keeps you going right Do oh it. yeah you you leave stages some nights you're like i feel high from that show oh for sure and um uh, I'm such a psycho that I think uh, I feel very misunderstood. And a laugh is like, oh, they got it. Right. So a room of strangers, 100 people going laughing with you is like, yeah, we can get what you're saying. Right. That is very powerful. Well, I wasn't even going to bring this up, but you go to a lot of subjects that get people in trouble today uh -huh. in this special. And I'm not saying that you even say a single offensive thing, but you literally hit all the buzzwords that people who don't like comedy, you know, it makes them put their head up. Do you do that on purpose? Or? Of course. Yeah. Uh, I think that's the beauty of it. You know, yeah. that Carlin didn't have the words you can say on TV. You know, <laughs> he said the dirty words you can't. Yeah. So uh, I thought that's what we were doing here. It's right. part of the fun to me. Yeah. And that's what I would want to hear if I was listening to a comedy show. So the, the, uh, the idea that somehow somebody could, hurt your career you just you're not going to worry about such things i worry about it every day all the time yeah. constantly and it sucks and it's scary but i think those people are mean and retarded <laughs> <laughs> I, I think i think they're bad people i think they're they they use this guise of morality or whatever yeah. to uh to get you but like it's it's mean what they're doing. I, we're all gonna die one day. I'm trying to make people laugh. I'm trying to elicit laughter. And if you don't like something, talk to me. But just uh, we'll work it out. I have don't want to hurt anybody. Have you ever been in that situation where you felt misunderstood, whether it was a review or anything like that? Oh yeah, they're yeah. all they're all pretty harsh. Yeah. Um, a lot of people don't get it. I think people just it's almost Pavlovian now, where they're like, oh, you did a trans joke, so you're transphobic. I'm like, well, how'd you get to hate? I just right. did a joke. I made a joke about you. I don't yeah. hate you. You know. Yeah. But oh, it's you just know? so easy. No, well, I love you. But you know what? What is funny? Because uh, I've owned clubs before we got to this thing, and now you will hear stuff in clubs, even in New York City, where if you do something close to the line, yeah. people will go ooh, yeah. like at school, and you're like, that's something children. I know, Dude, not adults. And you think you're, you're you've become conservative. You're like this pearl clenching. Uh, you're like Reagan's wife. You know, Nancy. Uh, Nancy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's been a while. But you're like, oh, oh how dare you? Uh, well, I right. never. And you're like, what are you? What are you? Stupid? Come on. Either that, you're stupid hey, or you're lying. Yeah. I'm glad you switched it to stupid. Yeah. Because I think that's. Know. I think that puts us in a better zone. You can't use yeah. them all, but I think a lot of it comes down to uh, narcissism and stuff. And they they want to get they want to get points for knocking you down. Now they're the hero. Like I did a show in Kentucky, Lexington, not bragging. And uh, you know I did the R word. I did a joke, and a lady. I was selling merch, and a lady came up and waited in line. She was like, "Hey, my uh, niece has Down syndrome. You got to stop saying that word." And I go, "Oh, geez, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend you." What'd you think of the Holocaust stuff? And she goes, "That was great." And I was like, <laughs> "Yeah." So wait a minute. Yeah. It's just when it's your thing. Yeah. If we had to cater to everyone, we'd have no act. Right. Well, uh, I know. Like right up to our last day, Joan Rivers never backed down from it. Yeah. You know, Joan Rivers. People don't realize because she's been around. You know, doing at the top of her game for many, many decades. But at the end of her life, she was still going. Oh, for yeah. those same premises. Even those red carpet. I used to watch her show on yeah. E. And yeah. she would say, wild. I'm talking 1999, 2000. It wasn't yeah. that long ago. And uh, there's a clip on YouTube of a montage of her saying the most savage uh, right. whatever Joan Rivers. And they are wild. Stuff I would never even say. Yeah. And it was on TV. Yeah. She, is, uh, she was one of a kind, man. And, oh, yeah. Uh, but who were the people that you first saw when you were a kid and you were like, this... This is a job? 
funny, <laughs> standing there? Yeah, that was weird. I think uh, my dad had a record of Woody Allen, the nightclub years. Right. And those jokes still hold up. Right. Uh, all but the, the rest of his life doesn't. Well, you know, I mean, I like Cosby's later work, but uh, no. Um, no, I, you know, uh, George yeah. Carlin was big because he, yeah. he would, he had all the disciplines. He would do like uh, these crazy, silly, like, you ever look at your watch and then look up and you've. Don't even know what time it is. And I was like, I do do that. And that <laughs> yeah, was right. huge. And then he would talk yeah. about pussy farts. And then he would talk about, he said the N-word a couple times. Uh, so he was he was all over the road. And I loved that. And then uh, when I saw Pryor for the first time, I was like, oh, my God, this is a whole different thing. Yeah. And then, then you get older and you, you see Mitch Hedberg. You see, I used to love Ellen. Ellen, uh, when she was straight, was amazing. Um, <laughs> she was great. She was really, really a well-respected club yeah. comic, and she was from New Orleans, so That's that right. didn't mean a lot to That's you. That's right. She right? never represents it, but yeah, she's But from, you don't either. From... I, I talk about it all Nothing the time. Nothing about you seems like it's New Orleans. Well, I don't have the accent, but in my special, I use uh, all New Orleans music. I yeah. used uh, Mardi Gras colors for the title. I got it in there. All right. It's working. It's it's uh, subliminal. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so that gave you this thing that this could be done. Yeah. Uh, you start going up in New Orleans or within an hour and a half drive in any direction. Yeah. How long before you started saying, I got to get to the big town? Uh, well, you, there's so, such a low ceiling of comedy yeah. in that area, especially then. So uh, two of my friends, we talked about it. We moved. We moved within like, I don't know, six months to New York. Six months of going up to Six first, months yeah. of starting, and then yeah. said, let's go to New York. We, we're done here. We did it all. Yeah, you did everything there was to do in the greater Lafayette area. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and we were killing, and then we yeah. moved to New York, and we were the worst comics in America. Of course, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and who were the first, like, New York guys that you met? Uh, well, geez, I met uh, this guy, Mike Lawrence, who uh, great, now he writes for a writer. ton of stuff. Hilarious writer. Uh, Sam Morrill. Um, Still a good friend. Good also, friend. just like yourself, a real machine when it comes to yeah. material. I really connected with the, the comedy psychos. Like, the right. people were all in on this. <laughs> yeah. And because uh, we were such nerds. That's all we would talk about. You know, this joke. How about that album? Blah, uh, blah, blah. And then some people, you could tell they didn't have it in them. They didn't have that. That compulsion. Right. So, so they fluffed off pretty quick. Yeah, and had a good life. Had yeah, a very yeah, well yeah. put together life. <laughs> oh, but, yeah. Uh, so how long ago were we talking about that you knew Sam, like you met Sam Morell? This is probably 2008, yeah. 2007. And both you guys are kind of breaking through about Finally. Yeah, the same time. Yeah. So who was that class for you? Who were... The guys that, okay, the other guys who are starting, and now the people that are in for the long run are. Uh, well, we all looked up to, uh, I'm a little younger than a lot of those, like a Joe List or a Dan uh -huh. Soder were a, a couple years ahead of me. But then we all looked up to Nate Bargatze. He was right. the guy we thought was super funny and original. Uh, Whatever happened to that guy? <laughs> it's sad, isn't it? Just did the Bridgestone Arena. <laughs> yeah. And I remember yeah. seeing Jessica Kearson annihilate at yes. Gotham, and I was like, oh, my God, I could never do that. That's yeah. insane. So, yeah, it was, uh, it, was, it was like a comedy college. Right, right. With a lot of booze and uh, fat chicks. Well, <laughs> <laughs> at what point did you quit drinking? I'm hung over now. <laughs> yeah. That's why you didn't know it was a live audience. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we can't talk about the. We can bring up your tour though, right? Sure. You got a tour all over the place. The tour is called uh, "You Don't Say Tour." Uh, you go to marknorman.com, and this will be during the Soup to Nuts on Netflix. During, middle, and after, yeah. and they're not going to see any of that material. You got all new material. Since yeah, then. it's not. It's not all there yet, but I'm. I'm trying to pump it out. Does that? Uh, is that a weird feeling to yes. know that you need the new hour? Yes, it's terrifying. The clock is ticking, and now people are so comedy savvy that I'll do an old joke to slip one in from like yeah. an old special, and they'll yell out the special name. So the times wow. have changed. Wow. These Reddit psychos, they're all they're all nuts. That yeah. They study everything and they they want to get you. Yeah. But it's amazing right now 
as if you, you've moved into theaters and Sam and everybody's moving in the theaters. Like you said, Nate is, uh, yeah. I think, just sold out the state of Nevada. I don't know <laughs> whether they put a fence up around it, some big screens. But, I mean, but playing at these major places, and you're all doing it at the same time, but weirdly to, like, your own each individual audience. Yeah. In like, it used to be, okay, people got on Carson and they got that Carson audience to come out, the, or they got the HBO audience to come out. But you guys are all kind of doing it individually. Like, I'm sure there's people that love Nate, but that never had the chance to even see you. Wow, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, they probably hate yeah. me. I mean, when yeah. he's so clean, you know, yeah. and I got 12 minutes on trans jizz. <laughs> so, uh, how is the trans jizz material? It's, it's getting <laughs> there. It's getting there. It's an iffy stuff. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't work in the Midwest, but yeah. uh, I'm working on it. Yeah. Uh, so that, I mean, this. That's, that's the internet. The internet yeah. allows you to splinter and find yeah. your people way easier. Because before it was just comedy. Right. Now it's it's Nate or this right. guy or that guy. You'd find your person. Well, there are also people that are selling out. Like, the, I'll see somebody's coming to Radio City. Yeah. And go, I haven't, I've done, I've never heard of this person. You uh, know? It happens all the time. And it's happening all the time now. But if you think about it, look how long it took for the internet to get to that point, to be yeah. sophisticated. Sure. And if it wasn't really doing it like this 10 years ago or eight years ago, even five years ago, probably not in the way that it's doing it now. That's why I think it's win. I think TV's it's, it's gonna, I think it's uh, on the way out almost. So who cares about this sag strike? You know well, what I mean? I mean, I hope the right. We still need content. We still need shows and movies. I hope the writers. I don't anymore. <laughs> I like watching monkeys on uh, TikTok. I'm obsessed with it right now. He's but, wearing clothes. I mean, I love a good. <laughs> but yeah, I want to see Oppenheimer. You know? Do you really? Seems like a funny one. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, you know. Yeah. I, I know what it's like to bomb. Oh, um, oh, but uh, yeah. it's relatable. Yeah, but yeah, I just I like uh, cinema. You know, uh, my father was in. Uh, it's you know going into the, how uh, the generation changed. My father was in World War Two, and he was in the Philippines. And when that bomb dropped, he was like. This is fucking great. <laughs> and uh, I remember you said my first vote was for Truman. Wow. I and I'm like, okay, uh, let's keep that in the family, though. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't think we need to be saying that on the street. Wow. But, yeah, it was like a, it was a positive. Yeah, you for, are old. Yeah, I am. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'm done. Just I'm kidding. done. Uh, but, yeah, that's uh, that's the way the world changes. That's why I'm not going to see Oppenheimer. I know how it ends. <laughs> and, uh, it's not good. Uh, you're more of a Barbie uh, guy. Yeah, I'll be at that one. All right. Um, but, yeah, of course. you want, But you're part of SAG? Is that the... Apparently. I didn't know. <laughs> I had no idea. From doing Amy's show? Yeah, Amy's show. A couple... I think I was in some talking head stuff. You know? Yeah, yeah, and you had to sign up for that. Yeah, but, which but, I didn't know. I, I, I get nothing out of it, do I? I'm paying dues, apparently. <laughs> i got to look into this. I think you have people. They should get the questions. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, sorry. They talk You're to the right. managers. Yeah. Um, but was Amy the first kind of that kind of exposure for you? Doing huge. Like, yeah. Huge life raft. I yeah. was going nowhere. I was an open micer, and I was bombing at a show, and she walked in on the one joke that worked. And she said, uh, hey, that was a funny joke, and uh, I'm doing some Long Island gig. You want to open? And I said, uh, sure. And, and then we did that for like six years. And then she, uh, when the show broke, people almost forget. I mean, that thing was one of the last like sketch show that just came yeah. in like a hammer. Hammer. Yeah. won a couple Emmys, a Peabody. Yeah. It was big, yeah. big names were on it. Yeah. Have you seen her new show? It's on one of the primes. Of it. It was just, Life and Beth. Yeah, Life and Beth is just terrific. It's great. You know? she, she's a talent. Yeah, she is. And she just put out a special. Right. And it's it's good. And I'm like, where did you? I never see her running it. It's it's amazing. Well, she still does the cellar, but 7 o'clock. Uh, you know what I mean? Her and Norton... Are in early. Oh, <laughs> you come okay. in much later. I'm at the one a.m. spot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, you come in with the people that don't really have to get up with, right, in the right. morning with children. <laughs> you know, um, but is uh, but you did get married, which is 
was like a shocker to people yeah. because you and there's a lot of comics that you, we know their routines, but people don't really know your personal life. Sure. Yeah. I, you know, she started crying. I felt like I had to do it. But, um, <laughs> you know, it's a tough spot. That's, by the way, it's a beautiful story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Your, your kids are going to love that one I mean, day. she's great. She's yeah. a great gal. I just think marriage is strange and slightly antiquated. But it is it, odd, isn't it? It's very odd. I don't understand yeah. it at all, but ladies and gays seem to like it. So, uh... <laughs> I couldn't believe that they wanted it. You know what I mean? It yeah. seemed like they had a great lifestyle. And the military, they wanted yeah. it. That's fascinating. Strange yeah. choice. Um, <laughs> but I think people just want to be included, accepted, and I get that. But uh, I always think that marriage is their anal. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think for women, I think guys are like, hey, <laughs> one day we'll put it in your ass. Yeah. And, uh, and then, you know, they're like, oh, I don't want to. And. And you're like, well, now you know how I feel, yeah. you know, with the marriage. So when you, you know, when you got anal, nah. and we were all surprised about it, but it was a happy, <laughs> happy occasion for you. You still, it you, was great. You it was love, great. Yeah. It was but great. you would be just as happy if you guys didn't have to go get a license. Yeah. It's yeah. strange to bring the government into this. Yeah, well, they do everything well. Yeah. So we're lucky to have them. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, it is an odd thing. It's also weird that three people can have a business, and everyone's like, oh, yeah, I see how that works. But three people can't have a, a marriage. Oh, you know what I mean? interesting. You know, like there was the, I think it's the Hooters Five. But if it was like a wedding, everyone's like, this is really fucked up, you know? Right. But for a business, you know? You're going to have the same problem. One guy wants out. It's a good point. Yeah. It's a good point. And it's a lot less messy if you want to get out. That's the other thing about marriage. Like Kelly yeah. Clarkson just got divorced, and the guy got some nobody, got half her money. Yeah. And That's, that, that sucks. Yeah. <laughs> for, well, for her. Yeah. Well, they're partners. That's the thing. That's what a uh, marriage is. But we were already partners. Right. Then she, she wouldn't have gotten anything then. Yeah, that Better. seems about right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I would feel the same way if it was reversed. Yeah. If 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 she was getting anal. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I would take it in the ass. Yeah. Um that's beautiful, by the thank way. That's you, thank you. These are my vows. Uh, yeah, we yeah. We're we're growing today. <laughs> we're growing, we're evolving. There's nothing wrong with waking. You know what I mean? <laughs> now, uh, do you have, are you a guy that has career plans? Because at one point it must have been, you know, get on The Tonight Show or Conan or those, those kind of things, then have a special. Yep. Now you're doing all of that. Yep. You're, you, you've probably surpassed any kind of thought that you have how far totally. you would have gotten. Totally. Yeah. This is crazy. Uh, and nobody likes to hear this. But I uh, I really like this level. Right. This is great. I don't want to go further. I think it gets worse. And it does. People get meaner and angrier and yeah. want more. And then I don't want to go back either. This is great. How, who's somebody that you saw kind of go past the comfort level where you're like, oh, I don't want to have that life? You know, somebody who did so well in comedy that they started to get blowback. Well, obviously the Louis C.K.'s of the world. You know, I, I hadn't to... heard anything about that. <laughs> but yeah. scandal aside, right. I used to open for him as well, and uh, he was just so fam. I mean, he was going to the Oscars, and he was right. in a Woody Allen movie, and he was, you know, his show was lauded as the most brilliant TV show on FX, and all this stuff, and. I got a little, got a little nutty, you know. We're private jets, we're here and there, all yeah. over the world, you know, doing a show in Israel or whatever. And I was like, "This is, this is scary. It's a bit right. much." And he couldn't go anywhere. It yeah. didn't seem fun. But also, I think before everything hit, I mean, he had three television shows, yeah, going at the same time. And by the way, three great shows, yeah. You know, I mean, they were like really brilliant shows, and he's putting out specials and everyone well that's what louis does you know yeah, what i mean yeah. like you almost forget that nobody was doing no that shit he's a special thing yeah and even now after everything happened i mean he's selling out big places sure when you hear his humor it's still still the funniest that you know 
Yeah. Out there. I mean, he's just brilliant going places that other people don't go. But, but I know exactly what you mean by that, that there becomes a time where suddenly you're looking at calendars and people have expectations for this, for, you know, whatever it's supposed to do in terms of numbers or money or whatever. And the fun starts to be zapped out of it. Uh, com- Completely agree, and I think the quality goes down, too. I mean, we've all seen comics blow up, and then they start having to put out more, and it's just not as good. Right. And you don't want to be that person either. So uh, this is nice, you know? Yeah. Sell out a theater, do your stuff, work on new, run around, see the country, see the world, make a couple bucks. It's great. It is. But- I'm a stand-up comedian. I don't, I don't want to do sitcom. That yeah. seems like a job. Um, like, why would I do a different job? I like this job. You right. Know? It's very strange. It is almost like they said, now would you like to play baseball? Yeah. You're like, what? Yeah, exactly. What? But, but you know what's really funny when you were talking about what happens when people fall off? I think what happens a lot of time is their fans are so rabid, yeah. right, that they don't understand that the material is not – as strong yes. because it's even getting a better feedback yes. in that theater. Totally. And then you're watching at home. You're not part of it. No, you no. Know? And that's another great thing about my level is I can have my people, but then I can go to a comedy club in New York on a Tuesday. And these, these are strangers. Right. And they don't know me and I'm bombing because right. they don't know who I am. You know, that whole anal marriage thing. They're like, what the fuck's wrong <laughs> yeah. with this guy? You know. <laughs> but if you know me, it makes right. more sense. Right. And so I can get a real f- honest feedback. You know, uh, I've seen people so famous maybe come into the stand yeah. and get introduced and they don't get the pop. Yeah. And I'm talking about like. Jim Gaffigan, who's gigantic, Huge. can walk into the place like, you know, he was in the Lower East Side and people are just looking at him. Yeah. Like, win me over. You know I what know, I mean? I know. And he did a 5,000 seater the yeah. night before and tomorrow. And he, and he gets it and he loves it and he treats it like a gym. And that's why he's good. Yeah. Because he's willing to do that. Other people go, hey, I'm, I'm in my ivory tower. Why would I go down with these plebs? I'm yeah. already killing it. But you need to bomb. Why is an ivory tower a better tower? I never even understood mm. that. I think I would feel worse in an ivory tower. Yeah, it doesn't seem – it seems very hard. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. It's a good point. Yeah. Can you get plumbing in through ivory? I don't, I don't think I don't you know. can. That's I don't think question. there's any plumbing. I think you have to leave the shit. Yeah, good point. Also, we know yeah. what happened to the other towers. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, you know. <laughs> All right. See, I can't yeah. help it. Look, but uh, – By the way – this young lady has no idea what you're talking about. Oh, we, I think she knows. We now have people that have, like, in their early 20s, and you, you know, bring up the towers. They're like, yeah, where were they? And are you <laughs> fucking kidding me? <laughs> think of it, they go, oh, you, you, you were, I go, I think about it today. Yeah. You know, I never stop thinking about it. Sure, yeah. sure. It was great. <laughs> no. <laughs> But I know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> you know another funny thing about, and I don't know if there's. Do you need another uh, soda? Or you no, can, I'll go you, with the uh, still. Okay. That's that's improvising. Um, <laughs> but the funny thing about comedy is that you can come at it from so many places, right? Yeah. But end up at the same place. It has to end up with a laugh. No matter what kind of comedy that you're doing, I know I love that. You know what I mean? I love the style. I love you can have a, a Maria Bamford who's funny, and then a Tom Segura who's funny. They have nothing in common. They're so different, yeah. but they're both funny. Well, they're both white, so ah, I'll just say that that's... they're more similar than you think. Okay. No, I'm only kidding. Yeah, uh, but yeah, it is. It's it's a remarkable it's a remarkable thing. And now again with the internet. There are people that pick up an audience that wasn't an audience before. Like the example, there's suddenly like a lesbian audience. Yeah. Not lesbian comics, because there's always been, but there's a lesbian audience that's coming out. And I'm like, did they just ignore, you know, comedy before, or they just one of many? They didn't all show up together. Well, I think people. Uh, you're right, but I think people like to have their guy or their gal. Right. This person I connect with. You know, that's yeah. why you see. 
a Mexican comic have a huge Mexican following because it's a it's cultural. They go, ah, oh, you know about uh, right. chimichurri or whatever the fuck. Chimichurri, you know? yeah. Uh, whatever it is. Is yeah. it Mexican? I don't no. know. <laughs> I don't think it's anything. Oh, is really? it chimichurri? I've, I've heard of a chimichurri. Yeah. I thought it would be a funny word. But yeah. uh, By the way, you notice no one in this room is helping us. No, we've, no, no. We've no. both looked around the room multiple times. Yeah. No help whatsoever. I, I don't think I made up yeah. chimichurri. <laughs> yeah. And that's but, what I what bugs me about a, like offensive comedy? Am I the only person having fucked up thoughts in the whole world? You yeah. Know, the, the, I got a crowd of two thousand people going, "Geez," and I'm like, "You never had a weird thought about kissing your dad?" You know, <laughs> I'm the only one who had that thought. Am I special? Am I a, an alien? Yeah. You know. All right, let's see. Show of hands. Uh, I'm mean, not I pulled, seeing any. I pulled that out of my ass, but you know what I mean. <laughs> no, no, no. I think you're on to something. All right. I mean, you're not quite there. Yeah. But workshop. Well, can't you, don't you notice sometimes you're in an audience and you do a joke about a certain taboo subject and people yeah. are like, oh, I can't say that, but I was thinking it and you yeah. said it and now I want to kiss you. Um. <laughs> Dad. <laughs> But you do, I, and I'm not going to give away the joke, but I'll just give away the theme because I'd never heard anybody do this. All right. But you uh, uh, talked about the diversity that has always been in porn. Yes. And I was like laughing even before that because my mind went to, yeah. It's always been there. Yeah. Always been accepted. And it gets no love. And no love whatsoever. Yeah, the the... the crux of the joke is all these networks pat themselves on the back for having all these like we have a gay channel or we have a black channel i'm like but yeah. porn's been doing that for 30 years and nobody <laughs> yeah. pats them on the back <laughs> right so they then you get credit for that yeah uh also interracial yeah the, trans tra yeah. you name it yeah midget whatever <laughs> they got it all yeah. animals <laughs> well you, i think that's now I don't, uh, I don't think that's on the hub, but... Uh, uh, I can send you a link. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just look up? I know that guy. Oh. Yeah, he's a comic in New York. Hey, hey. Nobody knows him. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, but that, that premise is hilarious oh thanks thanks yeah and is it what does that feel like to get a premise that you look around and you're like wait a tell didn't have that oh one? it's or the Colin best didn't have, i mean it's that's it's what a it's great all, feeling right? you're having that thought that no one else got there those are the best jokes when you hear like norm mcdonald say a thing he's like i'm not scared of uh korea i'm scared of my heart you know yeah. it's inside me and it yeah. can kill me and all that i'm like that's great yeah. that's a great angle that it was right there we all missed it well he got it you know yeah, whatever happened to him? He was good. <laughs> he was funny. Yeah, he was great. Yeah. He was a guy who was funny. You know, I said you lose 40% of your funniness being on stage. Yeah. He seemed to have it all. Right from the beginning. You yeah, mean, like yeah. he was all the same funny he is all the time. Yeah. He could get it on stage as well. He didn't lose any of it as a stand-up. I did uh, one of these shows with Norm, right? Oh, yeah. And as it was happening, what I know that he didn't, is that he was being canceled at that second, uh, right? Uh, because he had just gone on Howard. Oh, and yeah. And as I'm walking down the hall, ping, all this shit, outrage is coming out, right? And it, this was an apology tour that he was doing. <laughs> wow. And when he did uh, Howard, uh, it all just, they were they were already paying attention to him. Yeah, yeah. And the whole time that he was talking, I was like, should I tell him? Or... <laughs> Nah. Should I leave this as the last enjoying yeah. <laughs> moment that he has? What did he say? Uh, the R word. Yes, the word you used. Who would do that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> That's the problem with getting outside of your own thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. the there's some. Um, uh, now I'm not going to know his name, but it was a country star mm. that feels like he's being canceled. But it was by the country music station. Oh, really? And it's uh, Aldine. Does anybody know this Jason guy? Aldine. Jason Aldine. Mm. Uh, some song about try starting that shit in a small town or something. He's mm. going to act like we'd kill you if you do the same things that you do in New York. And uh, the people that should like it the most 
are the ones that canceled them. Ah, you know, that's when it hurts the most. Yeah, that's when, when it hurts the most. People come yeah. after you. But there's a thing about corporations. I mean, the best way to put it is they're really bad people uh, <laughs> who yeah. don't care no, about no. humans. Yeah, there was, there was that great meme of uh, it's a Scud missile, but it has a, a rainbow flag on it. You know, it just shows like they don't really care, but they'll they'll say all the right things. Yeah, they will say all the right things until that no longer works, and then they fired the guy who said the right things right. and then they move on. They move like, on. Like it's all done everybody. <laughs> go back to buying our products. Yes. Yeah. So this is it for you. You're not going to go any further. There's Hopefully not. No new I like it here. This yeah. is a sweet spot I got right under the palm tree. I uh-huh. can see the beach. It, I'm not in the water. I'm not back at the hotel. I'm right in the middle and I'll I'll take it. Now, uh you don't want to fly private you still want to be it's nicer it is nice it is nicer yeah, yeah yeah that would be good yeah but you know coach it keeps you honest <laughs> <laughs> you know i remember when leno said uh, i'm not gonna write a front coach is where the comedy is and now of course he's just <laughs> flying yeah of course. he's flying by himself you know <laughs> with a massage therapist uh <laughs> But, you know, you get to that point. I guess you get, when you're comfortable to do it, yeah. that's when you move in and do it. And you know? I think when you're getting mobbed at the airport, too. You know, yeah. you, Leno would get hounded. He can't go through uh, JFK. You you don't think that Jay Leno still could walk through JFK? Well, I think he would just get uh, really annoyed yeah. by all the people. Yeah, I mean, I, that chin is hard to hide, yeah. you know? <laughs> Uh, you know what uh, Joan Rivers said to me? I think on this show, too. She goes, name one joke he's ever done on The Tonight Show. Ooh. Name one. And I was like, holy shit. Wow. I cannot remember. And then he you killed know. her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Le- left her body on a beach in Long Island. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Gilgo. Yeah, the yeah. Gilgo. The Gilgo. I love the Gilgo. Yeah. That's another funny thing is my my lady, she's obsessed with true crime and murder podcasts and all. I yeah. think a lot of ladies love the uh, the murder and the rape and the, all that. Yeah. And the, you know, the, the molesting and the kids and uh but then people get mad about comedy. It's very fascinating. It is really strange. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or like look at a movie it's still nude scenes or frontal nudity that gets people upset. But John Wick just killed 450 people. Oh, And yeah. no one ever thinks of it as a bad thing. Right. We yeah. love it. Yeah. We're crazy about it. But true crime, yeah. I find to be sad. I'm going to be I'm honest with you. the same way. You. you know what I mean? It bothers me. Yeah. And I'm like, they can't find his daughter. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they're like, yeah, but wait to hear the next episode. Right, right. Yeah, they got popcorn out. They're yeah. loving every minute of it. Like, I remember when the Michael Jackson documentary came out, everybody's like, oh, I got to watch. It's going to be so juicy, and he's going to touch these kids, and here yeah. we go. <laughs> and then I made a pedophile joke, and everybody's like, whoa, that's yeah. too far. And I'm like, mine's not real. <laughs> you know? That's real. And you like that. That's real. I don't understand yeah. it. Uh, but it's a joke that you thought was funny, and then it didn't work. Yeah. Do you keep it in the act? Well, if it doesn't work, I don't keep it in the act, yeah. but I will try to fix it. Yeah. How long do you give it before you're like, we got to get the fuck out of here with this joke? If it, if it doesn't work, because an offensive joke that doesn't work is way worse of a bomb. Yeah. You know, because now it's a bomb and they are mad at you or think you're evil. You yeah. Know? But if, it, uh, if it's, it's a clean joke that doesn't work, I can, I can keep trying. But the offensive one, I got to bring back to the lab, and sometimes even take a break with to mm-hmm. see it from a different eye, maybe in a month. Right. Have you ever been in a situation where you start to walk the room where people were getting up and leaving? Sure, sure. Yeah. yeah last night. <laughs> no, no. Um, yeah. Yeah, I've had that. Uh, uh, racial jokes can tend to get pretty. I was in uh, Atlantic City doing a gig, and I was working on this bit uh, about. Uh, black people and it uh <laughs> i wasn't there yet but i was close and a, a older black lady walked out and she goes you're racist i'm going back to philly and if you ever show up i'm gonna kill you and yeah. i was like all right 
But I, I got the clip out of it. Right. But uh, I remember t- taking that and being like, all right, I got to really work on this bit. It's not there yet. Well, luckily she went back to a city that doesn't have a history of racism. <laughs> <laughs> Philadelphia. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I didn't want her to leave. It was, yeah. I tried. I pleaded. I was like, no, wait, hold on. I, got, I, got <laughs> I think I can get this. Yeah, let me get your email. I'll email you the <laughs> clip when it works. Yeah. You know? But she was gone. Um, well. Race is the toughest one. Well, trans, I think, has topped it now. Yeah. But but race for, for a while was the, the toughest. But you generally, let's say, don't take any – like there's – People doing trans jokes that you're like, okay, you're saying that you don't like trans people, right. but you're not that way. Your no. humor is not that way at all. No, it's it's weird. I have jokes about toothbrushes, mm-hmm. you know, and this is just another thing that exists. So I have jokes about it. Right. That's how I look at it. Yeah. But people get so uh, so angry. Yeah, of course they do. Uh, because look at the world we live in, where we have to find a, something every single day to be angry about. You yeah. Know? Why is that? Uh, I don't know. I I may be like remembering the past too, you know, too nicely. Mm-hmm. But I don't think like I remember when you used to be able to say no matter who the president is, that guy's a dick. Right. You know? right. Well, look at New York. No one's ever liked a New York mayor in history. So if you go, you know, well, this fucking guy, everybody's going to agree with you. Right. Even if they voted for him. Yeah. But we've we're way weirder about national politics. Yeah, it's it's very uh, divided, and you have to pick a side. Yeah. But can't there be nuance? Well, you tell me. Have you been able to find that nuance? No, I say nuance is the new N-word. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's weird. We're so fluid with everything else, but we yeah. can't be fluid with politics. No, no. Uh, we've, we've, we've given up that thing. Yeah, 60 genders, two parties. Yeah. It feels... Strange. It feels wrong. But but here's the, here's the weird thing, uh, like being anti-Semitic has come back. You know what That's I mean? That's true. And I I remember saying to Jewish friends, "Stop it." You know what I mean? Right. You know, everyone's past that. Stop. You're being paranoid. Yeah. And now I'm like, sorry, you're not paranoid. Um, I didn't think I, I didn't re- think it would be back. I regret bringing that back. But, uh, <laughs> no, I'm it's the weirdest uh, hatred yeah. of all to me because it, you can't even tell. Like, if you hate Chinese people, you got a pretty good odd. Mm-hmm. But if you hate Jews, how do you know right. if they're Jewish? That's what I never got. Like, people think I'm Jewish all the time. You're not? I wish. <laughs> but, but uh, you know, if you hate Jews, this idea of these weird people with horns and, you know, money stuff, I, you know, I guess I get that. But, like, there's got to be Jews in here that I couldn't, uh, if I was a Nazi, I'd be like, hey, see? I would have never known. That's, that's why it's so yeah. weird to hate Jews. Because yeah. you can't, you got to be like, what's your last name? All right. <laughs> I knew I hated you. You know, it's so strange, but yeah, it is. It is back. You know what I uh, honestly love about Jews is they don't try to get you to join their religion. They're the only ones oh, who don't go. Let me tell you. I disagree. You, you think they want you to be Jewish? Well, don't you have the guys at uh, the Barclays stop? They're well, always like, "Are you Jewish?" And I'm like, yeah, no. "No." Then they bless you. And no, they're they... looking for other Jews. Oh, they're looking they were... for Jewish people ah. to make better Jews. They're not looking to convert you. Oh, really? I was yeah. flattered. <laughs> Damn it. But you, you, maybe they just think that you look Jewish. But uh, yeah. the fact that you, you said they give you the sign of the cross, <laughs> well, you know, I they, know they don't do that. Okay, you turn you know, it to a circle. Well, they, as if they do something. It's the opposite. It's a circle. They hit you with a foreskin. I don't yeah. know what it is, but they're, they're rubbing something. Yeah. <laughs> Well, let me say this. It was great to have you do this show. Oh, it's an and honor. I know that you told me that you, you know, when you were a young comic, you listened to those guys and you learned a lot. And it, it, I, I, I always like when somebody knows that you're part of this, whatever this weird club that started so long ago, that you're one of these guys now. And the fact that you went, you know, because, you know, Dan Soder would tell me different ones that he would listen to yeah. over and over again. And it. It did no good, but still. <laughs> but you know exactly what I mean. Yeah, that, that sure. Thing that you know that, that now there's some young comic listening to you, man. And, yeah, the uh, bar has been lowered. This yeah, feels, the, uh, soup, feels weird. Soup to nuts. There's uh, out uh, 
July 25th, and you'd never talked about it once, but I'll just end with it, on Netflix, and then uh, your Mark's uh, You Don't, uh, you don't say tour. Go to MarkNorman.com for that. And uh, you're doing your first solo European tour. Yeah. Which is weird, right? Very weird. Yeah. I don't know how that's going to go, but I, you know, I just want to go to Europe. Yeah. <laughs> Mark Norman, everybody. Hey, thank you. This was great, buddy. Thank you.